Gece Gündüz'den merhaba. Gece Gündüz'de bugün sinema konuşacağız. Gazi Albuluvi'nin yazdığı ve yönettiği Peace After Marriage filmini konuşacağız. Ve bunun dışında Filistin sinemasını konuşacağız. Filmin başrol oyuncusu Hiyam Abbas'la birlikteyiz. Hiyam Abbas'ı biz limon ağacı, ziyaretçi, serbest bölge gibi filmlerden tanıyoruz. Hem oyunculuk kariyerini hem de yönetmenlik kariyerini konuşacağız. Hocam Hiyam, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I would like to start with your uh, latest project. Peace after marriage. Uh, how did you involve with this film, and how did it go? Oh, um, uh, I got the script by my agent in mm -hmm. the States. Mm -hmm. Sent me this, the the script of Gazi and Bender, and then I got like uh, I I read it. I really liked it very much. Mm -hmm. I laughed a lot through the reading of the the script, and I think it was very important for me because it was the first. Really, I kind of connect with a comedy because normally, like all my parts that I've done before, were like mostly dramatic, mm -hmm. and this is the first comedy that just like really got to my heart, and I said yes to it, knowing that really, like even the the the budget of the movie was very very minimum. Got to New York and I met with everybody there, and uh, like you have to know that like behind this uh, this production. There is a, a Turkish producer called uh, Farouk Ozertin mm -hmm. that just like helped really pull the movie together to be done. And from there, I just like, you know, went with it. We had a lot of fun. I think when you do comedies, you just like la laugh a lot much more than when you do drama stuff. You know? Comedy, comedy is good. Yeah, comedy okay. is good. Uh, uh, a few weeks ago, the Palestinian film director Hani Abu Assad was in Istanbul and you worked with him in paradise now uh, my question is uh, how do you feel about Palestinian cinema uh, you know what it's very hard for me really kind of to like talk in general about Palestinian cinema because Palestinian cinema basically is just like comes from all over the world mm -hmm. I mean if you look at Ghazi for example who is like a Palestinian American uh, he just like does movies that concerns whatever he goes through in his life as a Palestinian American, Arab American growing up in America. Mm -hmm. I live myself in Paris. So like the movies that I'm involved with are not necessarily like completely Palestinians. You have Hani who just like uh, won uh, the Golden Globe for, for Paradise Now. And he, he just like finished shoot, shooting a second movie in the States. So it's like, it's, it's an, uh, uh, I would say it's an exile movie really. It's very hard. It's very hard to get money to do movies like for Palestinian directors. And very rarely the movies that come out from there uh, are, are like you would have one a year, while in other countries you would have few movies a year coming out because they have the help of the government. Which brings me to something very important to talk about how these movies are really kind of uh, budget it mm -hmm. like how, how the money will come to us we would have to go and big for money from abroad and that brings me back to talk about paradise about uh, peace after marriage oh, yes. uh, knowing that the budget was so slow and i think really by the help of farouk we got like a, a free post production here mm -hmm. in turkey that's why the like part of the team is here in turkey right right now to finish the movie and um, it's it's really like it's very hard for Palestinian filmmakers to kind of pull their budget together because we don't have we don't have help from our government for that. Like there is no culture. It's for the moment it's on the on the side. So that's why we kind of like call for for like for other countries. And I think that this is a great occasion that Turkey really got, you know, like for one time in, in a co-production in a way in a Palestinian movie. Mm -hmm. Yes. You also work with Moskitai and uh, work with uh, Hannah Laszlo, uh, an Israeli Jewish actress, and Natalie Portman, an Israeli American actress. Uh, was it interesting for you too? It's always interesting. It depends on each story. Like, I mean, mm. uh, really, you don't pick up the people before you go to do a movie, you know? Like, it's normally the movie picks you up and you just, like, follow the stream, you know? And it was very interesting to work with Amos because he's somebody that known to be very left-wing and very pro-Palestinian in the mm -hmm. way he sees like the politics in the Middle East and specifically in the conflict between Israelis and Palestinians. So of course it's like a great privilege to work with Hannah Laszlo and with Natalie Portman on this movie. It's like 
a story of three women. So having to go through this journey with these two women was really very interesting to me. Uh, my curious about Spielberg, you know, uh, you had a part in Muni. Uh, did you like working in a big budget uh, Hollywood movie? Look, it's very comfortable working in a... Yes, yes it's okay. very... Uh, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's something to say. And he's really like a great director. I mean, what I loved about him is basically he has doubts about what he's doing like any other, like a beginner almost in, oh. in, in cinema. And I think it's very interesting to watch really the way he, he brings up like his set together, his actors together, throw them there and follow what they're doing. And like, I, I really tend to like more uncomfortable, I would say like sets because I think it involves much more my humanity into the, f the, the, the, the, the doing of the movie, the making of the movie gets more interesting because suddenly you just like deal with people on a more human level knowing that you're all responsible to get this movie done mm. and to make it like come out. Again, this is our story with Peace After Marriage. I guess that's why I'm here. So I have to refer always to it really. Okay, let's talk about your movie, um, The Inheritance. Inheritance, uh, yes. Was directing always an objective for you or did you simply uh, feel that only you could tell that story? Uh, directing is like, I directed two short movies starting 2000 and then mm. 2002. And ever since I've been really wanting to write, but I worked a lot as an actress, which didn't, which didn't give me much time to kind of concentrate on on writing basically but um, this story is very important for me because it's the first like part of uh, of a feature where I would kind of put something personal from me in there you know and I think it's it's very important for me to kind of tell this story because it's a story about a Palestinian family which I feel like very interesting story yeah yes. it's like really about Palestinian it. family living in a Palestinian village in north of uh -huh. Israel for the first time, I think we would have to kind of get into the daily life of Palestinians in Israel, which we don't tend to talk about them when we talk about Palestine, because often we refer to Gaza, West Bank, or Palestinians all over the world, but never to this group of people like, you know, like the ones that stayed inside Israel. And it goes like the story happens through the war of 2006 with Hezbollah, like the, the the Lebanese Israeli last war mm. that we had to go through. I happened to be there when the war started. So uh, it's, it's, but the story really, it's basically about all these members of the family kind of like getting in um, conflicts with each other because each is hiding his secret and each is trying to vehicle in a way like the traditions and the inheritance of the traditions into their daily life and how that conflict between the different generations and the different interests of the different members of a one family. Okay, and my last question here, uh, it's about Jafar Panay. What do you think about the current situation of ja Jafar Panay? I think it's really sad. I think it's really like, it's very horrible to kind of like get somebody who is like, um, uh, porte parole, as we say in French, you know, somebody who speaks by the art just to break his legs in a way and just like get him in prison, not have him be able to kind of like say what he wants to say. I think really in politics, politics and art normally for me just like don't go together, you know, because to, to be artistic, it means like you have to be free to express yourself. So if politics gets in your way, you just like, you know, you can't really kind of be the artist that you want to do, want to be, sorry. I have one thing to say like as well, again, just like adding to, uh, to the, the, comp the, the, the, um, the continuity of, of this like um, experience of peace after marriage and Turkey, that I am trying really to work with Turkey on my feature. I'm trying to um, um, find funds in Turkey where like Turkey becomes part of the co-production, international co-production with different countries. For the moment, I have France and Israel being involved in the production of my movie. And I'm trying to work on getting like producers from mm. Turkey to kind of get involved. Uh, and uh, any Turkish directors you would like to work? With? Fatih yes. Akin, I'm sorry, like he's, the, he's, yeah, I love him. I know him and we talked about it. We would see what would happen. Okay, thank you very much, Hiam. Thank you, uh, really. Thank you for joining us. Hiam Abbas, 
İstanbul'da Yama Bas'la birlikteydik. Biz onu birçok filmden tanıyoruz ve bütün filmlerini ve hatta kendi e, yakında çekeceği kendi filmini de konuşmaya çalıştık e, bu süre içinde. Bir kere daha çok teşekkür ediyoruz konuğumuz olduğu için. Yaz boyunca Şile Fener'in 150. yılı nedeniyle bir dizi özel etkinlik yapılmıştı. Biz de gece gündüz de sizinle bunları paylaşmıştık. Bu 150. yıl etkinlikleri şimdi iki ayaklı bir projeyle kalıcı hale geliyor. Dedeman Şile'de açılan bir fotoğraf sergisiyle Şile ve Şile bezini anlatan özel hazırlanmış bir kitap. İşte detaylar efendim. 